Checkmate. What do you mean, checkmate? We've all been going for 30 seconds. That's 453 to zero. Hmm? So you think you're good at games, do you, Jets? But what about a real game? A game of champions? The clash of the great minds? The battle of the titans? No, you don't mean. Yes. Pac-Man the ball. Yes, the Pac-Man board game. Based on the 1980 arcade classic, this is a game for two to five players aged 10 and above where players take it in turns to play as the titular Pac-Man, running or bouncing as he obviously has no legs, around the maze while everyone else take control of so the four ghosts, Tinky Winky, La La, Dipsy and Poe. Trying their darndest to catch you and kill you, you score points depending on dots eaten, power pellets consumed and ghosts gobbled. But before we get into it, What's going on with this picture here? Pac-Man is a yellow circle with a V-shaped mouse. This is some sort of yellow alien. Who is responsible for this? This genuinely made me think this was some sort of poor quality knockoff. A bit of research showed that this is the actual artwork of the original arcade cabinet. What are you playing at, Namco? I'm no artist, but I could have done better than this. Okay, so here are the basics. As I say, you take turns playing as Pac-Man, determined by an initial dice throw. Everyone else controls the four ghosts, Aramis, Athos, Porthos, and Dogtanyan. If there's just two of you, the second player controls all four ghosts. If there's three, then non-Pac-Man players will control two each, and so on. As Pac-Man, you roll the three dice and make your moves around the maze, pushing down the dots as you go. When your turn is over, the ghost players turn over a card and this tells them how many spaces John, Paul, George and Ringo can move. If Pac-Man eats a power pellet, it's open season on the four ghosts. You throw the three dice again and pursue the spooky spectres as you see fit. Each round ends when one of the ghosts catches Pac-Man and the next player gets a chance to control the munching yellow ball. The scoring is quite complicated, but essentially different things you eat give you different points which are then tallied up at the end to decide the overall winner. So let's start with the positives. The actual game oozes quality. The little characters are well made and look authentic. The fact that Pac-Man makes his iconic waka waka noise <laughs> is a really nice touch. Uh, Mo, Larry, Curly and Shemp are hollow so they don't push down the dots as they move. So obviously a lot of thought has been put in the design. The board is set out as you remember and is made of a solid plastic rather than the usual cardboard that you tend to get in these tie-in board games. So overall the design is great. The actual gameplay is as close to the arcade game as you could possibly imagine. They've not added any gimmicks to change the gameplay up. It's just as you remember the original Pac-Man being. Move around the maze, avoiding the ghosts, racking up the points. Simple. Now that sounds like a good thing, but unfortunately this is where I have an issue with this game. You see, for a fast, frantic arcade game, where the point is amassing a huge score, simple works really well. As a board game where strategy replaces gut instinct, it loses something. The challenge is gone and unfortunately so is the fun. It's not interesting enough to keep you playing and therefore it quickly becomes dull. In the arcade game you keep playing to see if you can increase your score, but genuinely, once you've had a go at being Pac-Man, there's really no desire to play again. When you're controlling the ghost, you head towards Pac-Man as quickly as possible, and if Pac-Man eats a pellet, you can't move and you just wait to get eaten. Board games need a certain amount of complexity to keep you interested, and this is nothing to keep you coming back. That is why classics like Monopoly will be dusted off every Christmas for a round of family arguments, whereas Pac-Man will be played once and then shipped off to your local charity shop. So no, unfortunately I can't recommend Pac-Man the board game. It costs about £25 and I can't see anyone playing it more than once. If you see it in a charity shop for a couple of pounds, fair enough. But, warning, do check the contents first. I personally will be taking these models out of the box before I donate it. Okay, so thank you for watching another episode of Big Bad John Plays With Himself. As usual, please remember to... And don't forget to... Leave a comment. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks actually.